Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, <laughs> welcome back to Get It That Medical Degree, where we talk about everything medical related. But right now, we're doing a series in MCAT biology. Yes, MCAT biology. So we have this video, and then one more video, and then the biology section will be complete finally. Then we'll move on to, I don't know what yet, some another MCAT topic. But, anyways. Muscular system. Let's get into it. So you have different types of muscles. So you have skeletal muscle. So a little bit about this is it's a it's for support, movement, helps your blood move around the body, helps you regulate your temperature, and it's striated. It's a voluntary control, which is somatic. Uh, multinucleated, which means you have multiple nuclei in the cells, which and cat might ask you on. Then red fibers versus white fibers. So red fibers are slow twitch. They're more like support and they carry out like oxidative phosphorylation. While white fibers are more active. They're like the white meat kind of. And they're like anaerobic metabolism. So. You have smooth muscles. So smooth muscles located in like respiratory tracts, reproductive, cardiovascular, digestive. So it's like your involuntary stuff. So you see something that says smooth muscle? Like a test, like, oh, this part of the body has smooth muscle, and what do you think it does? Well, I won't be able to control it, but, yeah. It's used for, like, supported stuff. This is what it looks like, respiratory, reproductive, cardiovascular. You have no control of what happens in your heart. And if you did, I'd be a little concerned. But, yeah. You have no control over what happens. It's uninucleated. So that's something to know about as well. So go back to the other one. Multinucleated and skeletal muscle. Smooth muscle is uninucleated. You need a cardiovascular muscle. So this is the tissue of the heart. Again, you can't control what your heart does. At least like by thinking about it. So it's involuntary or automatic control. Autonomic. It's also uninucleated but sometimes binucleated. Um, cells are connected by discs that contain gap junctions, so cardiac muscles, gap junctions, something to keep in mind there too. The main tissue, the main thing that doesn't really have gap junctions, so I realized, is skeletal muscle. I didn't realize that until I got to a question on one you world asked about it, and I missed it because of that, so, cool. And in the skeletal system, you have different types of bone, so compact bone is usually for strength, and it's like dense. Spongy bone, usually like the cavities of this is filled with bone marrow. The bone marrow can be either red or yellow. So yellow is fat, while red is usually like stem cells. And you have long bones, you have uh, peristatum, which is the tissue that connects, tissue that surrounds the bone, that's connected tissue. Ligaments versus tendons, so ligaments are bones to bones, while tendons bones to muscle so ligaments bone to bones tendons are bones to muscle something I always get mixed up on just because I don't know why it won't stick but it's something to realize there's a difference there keep moving on so the bone matrix the osteons are like the I guess the chief unit of the cell there's different bone layers they have like which surround like a long hollow passageway, which is called the Haversian Canal. So, uh, bone remodeling. So you have blast and clast, osteoblast, build bone. So B for B, and clast reabsorb bone. So parathyroid hormones kind of involve resorption of bone. Vitamin D increases the resorption of bone, and calcitonin increases bone formation. Something to keep in mind too is cartilage. Cartilage is firm, it's elastic, it's secreted by chondrocytes. It's also avascular and not innervated. Something to keep in mind. When something is not something, it's something to like, oh, everything else is this, but this is not. That's why I mentioned it. Joints, so there's immovable joints, immovable joints, immovable are kind of fused together. While movable are strengthened by ligaments and contain like a capsule. There is a fluid called a synovial fluid. 
this kind of lubricates the joints so they actually work and don't like you know grind on each other fetus the bones form from cartilage through the endochondrial ossification skull bones form directly from the mesenchymum and the intramembranous ossification but the main point of like skeletal muscle and stuff is like how stuff contracts so sarcomeres are like the contractile unit of striated muscle so myosin is thick and there's thin actin filament filaments troponin a intra, troponin and tropomyosin are found on the thin thin filament and they right regulate the actin myosin interactions so when you see the picture which will be in the next slide there's different kind of lines on it so z lines kind of define like the boundary of each sarcomer so it's kind of like how big it is basically the middle or the m is the middle of it the h only contains myosin filaments and also you have an i band which only contains actin filaments so something to keep in mind i and a go together i guess h is just myosin so i bands actin h is myosin and the a band the a band contains the actin and myosin so it has a combination and it's also the only part that maintains constant size or contraction. So this picture right here is a picture of a sarcomer. I see here is an M, which is in the middle, actin, Z disc. See the black lines are like the Z disc. They just show the boundaries. So to get the most out of a cell, like the, so some questions may ask like, which of the following is a picture of a sarcomer that has the best like potential energy or something to contract? It's usually the one that's in this resting position, like the one on the screen. If they're overlapping some, or if it's suppressed a little bit or stretched out a little bit, it's not going to have as much like potential energy, really. So, sarcomers attach end to end to become myofibrils. Each myocyte contains my many myofibrils. The SR or the sar pla sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is where a lot of calcium's at. And then the sarcolamia is the cell membrane of a myocyte. I don't know, I just don't call it just a cell membrane instead of getting a fancy name. And then you have T tubules, which are connected to that sarcolamia, and they carry signals. So the next couple slides, next two slides, are going to be talking about contraction and relaxation. So, beginning at the neuromuscular junction, the efferent, not afferent, efferent neuron releases acetylcholine. That binds to receptors on the sarcolemma, which is like the cell membrane. This causes depolarization. So, going back to actual potentials, depolarization means you're going back up to cause an actual potential, or polarization is kind of getting rid of a signal. Anyways, these, this depolarization spreads down the sarcolemma to the T tubules. As I said, they, these are the things involved with the signal, triggering the release of calcium. Calcium then binds to the troponin, which causes the tropomyosin to move, and this exposes the myosin binding sites of the actin filaments. And you have the shortening of the sarcomere occurs as myosin heads bind to the exposed sites of actin, on actin. Forms like a cross bridge, pulling the active filament and the thick filament. And then you get like the sliding filament mo model. And the muscles only relax when acetylcholine is degraded by acetylcholinesterase, which gets uh, rid of the signal, allows the calcium to return, and ATB binds to the myosin head, allowing it to release form. And then you have like a word, so, so some vocabulary here. Simple twitch is a single muscle fiber that responds to a brief stimulus. So that's simple, it's just like one thing going on. A frequency summation is when there's multiple simple twitches before a muscle has a chance to fully relax. Oxygen depth, so that's basically how much O2 is needed versus O2 is present. CP or creatinine phosphate as a phosphate group to ADP, forming ATP, 
in myoglobin is a heme king protein that is a muscular oxygen reserve. So what causes the, the release of what leads to depolarization that leads to contraction? This is acetylcholine. And for it to relax, acetylcholine has to be broken down by acetylcholine esterase. So something to keep in mind as well. Osteoblast or class, build bone. B for build, so osteoblast. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys learned something new. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Peace.